Hello everyone, it's Julie from Artfully You and today we're going to learn how to paint an abstract. Let's go! So you can make this um, on paper first, if you want to do a thumbnail sketch, if, if you want to be playful with it and you want to just dive in and do it on the canvas, then do so. so some of my students would just they'd really prefer to plan it out first. And then and then other ones are a bit more kind of just playful and wing it. They'll just say, so this is definitely like really very much based on your art style and what you want to do. I'm going to draw it straight onto the canvas. Um, mainly because I've done this quite a few times before, but um, but I also want you to see my process as well as I do it. But, um, you know, as long as we've covered the color wheel and you have 12 spaces, it can be as complex or as simple as you want. Um, you'll, you'll probably find that the, the best thing to do is keep it fairly simple because even though it looks simple when you've drawn it out, once you start coloring it, there's a lot more in it when you start. So, and so the next thing I wanted to talk about is color placement. So the way that I start my color placement is I put in one color at a time. So for instance, um, and I try and do imaginary triangles of color. So if you, if you look at my greens, I've got one, two, three. So that's a triangle, one, two, three. And then this is kind of a triangle, one, two, three. So that's kind of my, triangle um so then look at my yellows i've got one two three and then this could be another triangle one two three so you kind of want to space out the colors so this is why i do them one at a time um and it also means you only mix in the color once now you can do a transition if you want to have some fun with it you know you could put down your color and then transition it to a lighter or whiter version mm. within the painting which makes it really attractive um but or you could just do solid colors so again i'm just going to leave that up to you um but i do recommend placing one color at a time because you can have you can really get into it i've seen students and i've done it myself where you want to like see what all the colors look like together straight away and then you realize that you've got two colors next to each other, which doesn't read right. So you, you really don't want colors touching. So that's why it's easier to do one color at a time. So I'm gonna demonstrate drawing this out on my canvas. Um, I've actually got some pre-gessoed um, boards such as this one. Um, they're already pre-painted. I don't often buy pre-gessoed, but for this is quite useful. Um, so yeah, so so go for it. Just have some fun. Um, I'm doing this on wood today because it's I find it's a little bit easier to do this exercise on on wood. But um, I wanted you to do it on canvas um, if if that's what you have because I didn't want to kind of overcomplicate things. Um, so yeah, so um, I would say when you start adding color, start with your primary colors because um, they're straight out of the tube and that makes it easy. Um, and then start adding your secondary and tertiary colors. So this is my pre-gessoed panel. Um, only because I'm not painting on a canvas and painting on wood, so that's why I've pre-gessoed it. One of the advantages of um, painting it white first is your yellows will really shine straight away. I often find with the yellows, I have to give it an underpainting if I'm painting on burr wood. Okay, so so this is a really simple one. This is a house. Um, and, and I guess the appeal is it is so vibrant and colorful. It looks kind of like stained glass, um, but it's very simple. It's just a house made out of geometric shapes. Very, very simple. Um, here's a few other ones that are more random. Again, just random geometric shapes. Um, the one towards the left is more of a limited palette. So this is a tetrad because it's four colors. So you've got your purple, your turquoise, your pink, and your beige. Um, and then this is two paintings I've done when I was at art college. Based more on a limited palette. Um, so I, I wanted to create something that had a musical reference. So 
Um, so cubism is when you take an image, kind of explode it and put it back together in geometric form. So this is a piano. This is like basically Ken's grand piano, this one on the left. And then I kind of exploded it and simplified the shapes. And then the one on the right is a collage of basically everything to do with Ken and I. So um, we like climbing mountains. We we do a lot of music. There's my art palette there. There's the English flag. So, so this is a, this is a complicated one. We're not going to do a complicated one today. But I just wanted to kind of show you some examples of my cubism paintings that I've done from art college. Is that helpful? That's great. It's beautiful. Yeah. So um, going back to the simple ones, that's what we're going to be doing today. The kind of nice simple colorful ones so so up to now we've been focusing on um limited palettes and color mixing limited palettes and i want really want to just have freedom of using the whole color wheel today so i'm actually going to use this whole tape both sides of it so i'm going to get my sharpie So I like to put in um, sometimes a bit of an overlap. And I also like to put the shapes offset too. So that's my first three shapes. Oh, this is a postcard I got from um, the other day this is an example of some simple cubism i thought was kind of cool showing how they use the shapes obviously that's a limited palette this is unusual because they group these in twos i would normally group everything in threes okay i'm gonna get another circle Okay, so I'm going to get another circle. I might just slightly overlap this one. And then there we go. I think that's enough circles. I'm going to put in some straight lines. Again, I don't want to. So this is um, this is something quite a cool technique you can use. So I like to create sort of layers where it looks like one color disappears underneath an object and then reappears on um, another object. So I'm going to do a straight line going across. I'm going to jump over this one, carry it on here. So I can push the color underneath here and it reappears here. So I might turn this into a bit of a triangle. And again, I'll kind of go underneath here and it can reappear there. That's one of the a, a very kind of fundamental part of this style of painting is you have create kind of layers. So if I do say this is going to be red, if I do all of this red here, it'll look like it's underneath 
this object, this circle. A lot of the time they also have lines that weave in and out of objects. So if I put my ruler here and I'll start drawing across this circle and maybe along here. So I'm not, I'm not doing a continuous straight line. I'm kind of breaking it up. Do it here. So you see how that line kind of stops, jumps, stops, jumps. That's another way of creating some. And then I think I'm going to make this into a double line. And then once you've got enough shapes, how is everybody's design looking? I'm gonna I'm gonna count my it's coming. <laughs> I'm gonna count my shapes now and see how many I've got. Okay, so ish doesn't have to be so one, two, Four, three, five, five, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, at least as long as you've got at least twelve, it's fine. Don't you want thirty-six? Not really. Um, at least as long as you've got 12, because um, really, we I know what you mean, we, we want to put in at least three times, um, but it, it's not set in stone, because what you can do is transition one color into the next. So I would say don't make it too complicated. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean by the transitions. Um, you see how I've kind of trust, transitioned orange into yellow and oh. orange into yellow there. So the, those counts, so you have they like count. three, yeah, they, three they yellows, count. Each, yes. but they transition. I yeah. see what you mean. So okay. they count. So, um, so don't worry about like, I've got to have exactly 36, you know. So here I've transitioned um, red, purple into red. And there I've trans transitioned green into green yellow. All your transitions are side by side on yeah, the color wheel? They're all analogous. Yeah. Yeah. So, this should we be going ahead with the Sharpie yeah. now or what? Yeah, go ahead with the Sharpie. Okay. And if you're really keen to get going and you already have your shapes, the other thing you can do as you start painting is you can add some lines in as you go. So if, if you're painting this and you think, gosh, this is a big area, I didn't realize this was a big area, you can just stop, put a line through it and break it up. But you can actually break things up as you go. So if you, if you think, oh, I really want at least three yellows or if you're getting towards the end and there's some spaces and you think I don't feel like I've got enough blue in this you can just make an, a new section you can just kind of draw an extra line in so that's what's so nice about it being abstract and kind of just keep working on it as you go so you probably will need to put two layers of each color I'm going to put a, one more line in here. Um, 
whenever you're ready, you can start painting. I would say pick one primary color to start with and put it in three in three spaces. Uh, would you recommend um, uh, marine blue or uh, azalea or what is it, uh, cerulean? Or Any, does that matter? Anything you want. Okay, thank you. Anything you want. Have some fun with it. I'm going to use ultramarine. Actually, this is, sorry, this, I already had this on my palette. This is cobalt. Only because I had it out from yesterday. Don't worry if you go over the lines because we can put them back in later. So we've made our own sort of painting by numbers. If it's easier for you to actually put a little pencil mark of, you know, I want all of these to be blue, you could put a B for blue if that, if that helps. I tend to just look at it visually and think, okay, I've put a blue here. So where's my next blue gonna go? And I'm probably gonna need another layer of this. So there's one. You'll find you'll start off quite quick and then you'll slow down as you have to start figuring out, you know, color, good color balance. The first few, the primary ones, I find it, I, I get those done quite quickly. So I'm starting with just three at the moment, but if I find I have spaces left, I can always put in some extra ones of the same color later, but I'm just gonna work with three at a time for now. And then what? one, sorry. I was just gonna say, what brush should we, would you recommend? I'm oh, on an eight by 10. I'm using a number, I'm on an eight by eight. Uh, yeah, let's say eight eight. I'm using a number four flat. Okay. Thank you. I think I'm going to do red next.
I'm excited to see your designs. <laughs> I think I might have to redo a lot of the color. It seems the canvas is showing through. I yeah. guess I have to dry it and then go back. Yeah, I have the same issue. Yeah. Yeah, I often have to put it in a few times. Would you do all of it uh, with different colors first or dry in between each um, colors? I do all of it first. Okay. Um, just in case I need to make any changes, it's easier to paint over one layer of a color than two layers. You know, if I have to change the color. So I kind of treat it as getting my plan down first and then I'll go over everything. Unless you're mixing and you feel that it would be challenging for you to mix the same color again, in which case, um, you know, you may want to dry it and then, so if it's like a tertiary color that you feel might be challenging to mix the same again, or you don't have enough of it on your palette or you're not using a wet palette. So this is my triangle, and then my one, two, three, my triangle of red. This reminds me of geometry. I think you could use a protractor on this. You could. So Dean's been my little business partner this week. As I said to him, I'm going to be teaching cubism this week. And he's been finding all these YouTube videos like, mommy, here's another video. I think you should watch this one. This would be a really good one for everybody. And then he said to me this morning, Are you doing adults or kids today? And I was like, adults. And he went, what about this video? Do you think this because he's, he's like my business partner helping me plan the classes. It's really cute. He's getting into it so much. It's really, really sweet. That's what a great nice. experience. That's it's wonderful. Great. And then and he you... actually had art yesterday and he said, he, he said to his teacher, do you know about Cooper's <laughs> his teacher was like a little bit blown <laughs> away by this six-year-old asking him. Asking him. <laughs> This morning, do you know what he's doing this morning? Like before he even woke up, because we have one of these Google hubs so he can just talk to it and it comes up with wherever he wants. This morning, he came into our room and he went, Mommy, I've drawn the Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said to me, do you know the Mona Lisa has no eyebrows because they faded over time? I'm like, I didn't know that. <laughs> I just think it's lovely that he's so into art, you know. How old is this kid? <laughs> he's just turned six. Oh my god! Amazing. What what's sad is we mature. By the time we get to our early to mid twenties, that creative, free spirited brain starts to be dominated by this rational, shutting us down. <laughs> part so if we could only get that childhood fearlessness and creativity back exactly so it's great you've got him he's a great asset he's amazing and when other kids hear him in the class too i think it inspires the peer-to-peer -peer, um uh interaction and and excitement well, the mm -hmm. interesting thing is, is he's like my little salesman too, because he's got one of the kids in his class to sign up for my class now. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and it's funny because yesterday I said, anybody who does a referral gets an artfully you t-shirt or hat if you refer a friend. And um, because I was telling one of the kids in my class live yesterday, he said, mommy, I referred a friend, so I want a t-shirt. <laughs>
going to start my third collar now. But if anybody wants to show me what they've done so far, I'd love to see your designs. Oh, Anita, very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I started doing I started doing the one in your notes the house yeah the house I love that one yeah and it got it got away from me so I painted over my white and then I had to wait for my white to dry and you're uh, right about the marker if the if the paint is if your white isn't dry your base white on your canvas your marker goes bad so yeah exactly. anyway I'm playing I'm playing catch up here that's okay that's no problem Uh. how do you thicken the dollar store paints julie is there some magic cornstarch or something um not really um because you'll dilute the pigments um okay yeah they are, okay. they are what they are you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would say dollar store are great for paint nights or if you're painting occasionally i think if you're going to be painting all the time investing in something like this um yeah so they got these in a, in a set, I think on Amazon, and I've seen them in Michael's as well. And I think they're about $50 for a set of six, which is actually pretty good because when you buy them individually, mm -hmm. they're a little bit more. So, um, but I would always say buy two white of whatever. I would oh. never say buy a set unless it was a set of the, the colors that I recommend in my notes. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you need minimum cadmium yellow, cobalt blue, and cadmium red and black and white that's kind of your minimum uh if you want to go to secondary colors i would get ultramarine blue um yellow ochre um and alizarin red and black and white and and that's all you really need to get going um some of these sets throw in kind of really random colors that you can't really use so um but i put the colors in the notes of which ones i I recommend. Okay, I'm gonna go for my yellows now. Uh, just before you move on, what was that name? Was it Galleria, that set? Oh yeah, so this is Windsor and Newton Galleria, okay. but if you do Windsor and Newton Galleria, so these are series one. So they have different series numbers. So series two tends to be more expensive. Series one is kind of your basics. Okay. Um, but um, I noticed that there are the paints I think are on sale at the moment, and Michaels is always overpriced. You know they rely on people using the coupons. I don't know why they don't just price it properly. Um, I know um, Corey's and Amazon. If you look in the right place, like Amazon, you have to be a bit careful who the seller is. Make sure that the the right the priced correctly. But Corey's is a little family business in Hamilton, and I find they're always pretty good on price. You know, they're very fair. Um, I've been do, they, um, do these all have um, like curbside pickup or are they open for business or? I think they're open for business, um, but I keep okay. getting emails from them. Yeah. I think pretty much everything's open for business now. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Um, but. Um, if you have trouble getting anything, let me know. Because like, sometimes I have things in in my stock that I've bought, um, you know, to to make gift packs, or I've just bought extra because they've been on sale or whatever. So um, I'll have a quick look on Amazon now at the the, the set that um, I bought. That was pretty good. But um, I always say most of the time don't bother buying a set because you won't get all the colors you want you know buy them individually um trish from our class she's my best friend 
for, for my birthday, she gave me um, a Michaels gift card. Oh. And I went there yesterday to get a few colors. And I asked if I could use the 30% if I paid each for each individual tube and they let me do it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I got 30% off each tube. Oh, so wow. I have the... I have the Windsor and Newton. Um, that was nice. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, well, it was a student. I don't know. I just said, do you mind? And it wasn't busy. Right. It wasn't right. busy. So that might have been why, too. You should be using Laura's teacher's Laura. discount. Oh, what is that? Well, she gets the she gets 15% off because she's a teacher. You just need her teacher's card. Is that at Michael's? Yeah. Is that in addition to the store? I think, I don't know if they do two coupons. Uh, sometimes they do. It depends which um, server you got. Hmm. Cause they asked me if I was over 55 and I started laughing. Oh. And uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> she said, cause otherwise, <laughs> I mean, obviously. And she no, said, not you get, obviously I would have got 10%. <laughs> oh, I, I would, I said, you made my day. Oh. Anyway, she said um, they give automatic 10 or 15 percent for people over 55 or or if you have a coupon it's and it's cheaper then they use the coupon. So but I'm still using my dollar store paints because I want to use a lot of them. Oh, up, yeah. So, Just so for this painting, up. since it like I don't mind doing this, but it's not my favorite type of median like the abstract. So yeah. I'm using oh. my dollar oh. store paints. Some people love it. Some people don't. It's just a very individual thing. Yeah. But really, I just wanted you to do this as a color mix and exercise. Yeah. We're gonna go back to the color wheel and what we've learned in a minute. And we're going to start making our secondary and tertiary colors. Um, I just wanted yeah. a bit of a refresher on color mixing. Exactly. Yeah. So. So three. Oh, you're way ahead of me here. Oh my god. Um, but I have to say, there's something very therapeutic about just throwing paint down on a canvas, like in this exercise, because it, it's not very. Um, we're not creating a forest or. Yeah, I just, because I know I know you said you wanted to be more playful. You know, you want to yeah. make it simpler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fun. I'm having a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something. There's something uh, nice. About it it really thing. unleashes your creativity. It's like coloring. It's just like coloring, right? So. Uh, can I show you my work? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, very nice. Oh, I did I more geometry, <laughs> just free flow. Very nice. I like it. Thank you. I, I think it's fun. You know, I, I like doing this. So it so, is fun. So for your secondary colors, I'm going to give you the choice of just doing a solid secondary color or doing a transition, which in one way might be easier than trying to mix like the perfect orange. You know, you could start with a light orange and mix to a dark orange. So I'm gonna give you the choice of actually having it as a solid orange or a transitional orange from, you know, light orange to dark orange or even light orange to, to red. And so the secondary colors will repeat three times? Yeah, three times.
got a little helper. <laughs> He's walking across by. Okay, so I'm going to do orange to yellow orange, I think. I find it very difficult to have a steady hand and um, you know not spill over the shapes. That's why we go over it again with the Sharpie at the end. Oh. Um, honestly, it makes such a difference when you do that final going over all the lines again. So I've done yellow orange into orange. Can you see that transition? Yeah, nice. And it's kind of nice if you know if you mix it and you put it down, you think, oh, that's too orange. Then you can just add yellow as you get further off. Yeah, it's easy just to to, to mix as you go and just um, yeah. graduate the color like incrementally. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it looks so um, so interesting as well. And, and I'm using my finger thing <laughs> to blend like we did earlier. What was that, sorry? The finger uh, blending. Oh yeah. All the lessons are coming together now. See, everything's, yeah. You can see there was, there was a plan, there was a link to everything. Definitely. Yeah, I really like the yellow orange to orange transition. I think it's a really pretty transition. Now I know where that phrase curiosity killed the cat comes from. <laughs> So mischievous, it keeps trying to jump on my paints. Oh, so um, yeah, if anybody does want me to go be their shopping assistant at any point to go buy paints, I'm very happy to meet you and we could have a paint shopping day. <laughs> mm, that would be fun. Yeah, that's a very nice offer. We could have a field trip and then um, have a coffee afterwards. <laughs> so we could we could meet in Michael's or something and then go to Williams for a coffee afterwards. Let us know, Julie, when you want to go and then we'll see if we can yeah. go. Okay. Let's put it out. Well, I'm having a week's break to write the winter programs. When, yeah. when this term finishes mm -hmm. so I'm just going to take a week's break so that would be a good week because I won't have any classes that week because mm -hmm. um, I've got nine programs to finish writing so I'm just taking a a week to plan and give everybody a week a week off mm -hmm. to What week are you taking off, Julie? So this is this is week seven. So we've got next week and then the week after the week I'm taking off. The um the CFU one is slightly out of sync because we had um Thanksgiving. I really like that transition. So I would count this as, you know, two, two spots because I'm, you know, I'm transitioning between two colors. So I would count this as I've already put my orange and my yellow orange down. Okay. 
Oh, I really like that. Kind of like the combination of solid colors and transitional colors. I think that looks mm -hmm. interesting. I feel much more relaxed in this class. <laughs> It is much more fun. I think the other times we were trying to make um, it look like something. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You might, <laughs> Liana, you, you might like my mindfulness class then, because we do uh, the, the mindfulness the mindfulness class is very much about kind of simple, paced, kind of enjoying the process, you know. Um I, I do. Um, oh, so excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, go. go. I was just going to say I, I do. I haven't been as regular in practicing, but I am in a, in a mindfulness group with CFUW and I, I try to do it or even just throughout the day, just doing the pausing and breathing and um, centering myself. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing is I'm sort of toast by about eight o'clock at night, but yeah. maybe that would be a good way. I'll just go on my pajamas and just go right to bed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I literally put everybody to bed. Like I'll tell them to take their laptops to bed for the last meditation. And then they're in, most people are in their pajamas ready for bed and they go to sleep and it's an hour and a half. So by nine 30, you're tucked in and asleep. So I, I kind of say, you know, come in your pajamas with your teeth brush so you can just stay asleep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah. S since D Dean isn't here, I can vouch. I did one of them in the winter and it was very, it was very relaxing. Ah. Uh, Uh, Julie, how are those transitions? I did the blue. I don't know if we can see gorgeous. them. Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, that blue. there is sort of fun. Yeah, I find it fun. I'm going to do a blue to yellow transition to get my greens in. So I'm actually going to mix on the canvas here. So I'm going to put in blue. And then I'm just going to start adding yellow to transition into green. So I'm actually going to do all my mixing on the canvas and not doing any mixing on my palette. And the nice thing, like you don't have to worry if you go over the lines because we can fix it later. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> You know my saying, there's no mistake, there's only happy accident. Stole it from Bob Ross, I think. Mm Yeah, I do find this relaxing because you um, it's a bit like doing one of those adult coloring books, you know. <laughs> you don't have to put as much thought into it, although, you know, we're still working on our color mixing and our 
So there's my green transition. And I'm going to say, if you run out of spaces and you haven't done all your colors, don't worry about it. <laughs> Blue into green again is so Julie, are you hang on a sec? Um, green the one the larger one that you've got of the green into yellow. Yeah, what is that? Uh, blue? I just did blue and yellow. So I started with blue up here and I just started out in yellow as I got down. Okay, okay.
So if you want to add some white in, you can do two. So I've added a little bit of white to my purple to help it pop. Gives me another interesting transition.
So my last tertiary color is green blue. I might put some white into this one. They will probably have to do a second layer on all of this anyway. And the difference between the first layer and the second layer is quite striking, yeah. especially when you then go over all your black lines again. That makes yeah. a really big difference. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button for notifications. Thanks, Dean. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.